Welcome back guys, it's Felix and in this tutorial we're going to go over how to access some of these things that we've created inside our generate loops because they're kind of buried down deep. Even though this generate loop builds all of the stuff inside here, because it's buried, it's a good way, a good idea to name this loop so that we can get to the things inside it. So we can add a name by putting a colon after begin and specifying the name. In this case, clocks sounds pretty appropriate. Now, if we want to access one of these clocks that we've built, say we wanted to hook up all of these remaining LEDs to it we can give the loop name and then we give it an index of the loop, the specific loop that we want. In this case, since we've looped through three to four times, now the index comes from this genvar. What it does is it takes this loop name and then starts at the index you give it. So since we started at 0 and ended at index 3 with our genvar, these specific generate blocks that have been essentially duplicated four times, these specific generate blocks have indices 0 through 3. If we started this at 1 and went to 5, then they would have indices 1 to 5. But we'll leave that at 0 and let's get 0. So that should be clock 2 to the 0, which would be the 1 hertz clock. And to access that clock instance inside this generate block that has been looped, we can use dot and give the name of the instance. So in the first gen the first block of the clocks generate loop, there is an item called clock one. And this is how we access the clock. We can also access the wire that the clock is outputting to right here. Clock slow. And now we can put this clock out that we have, the slow one, on anything outside of the generate loop before when we didn't have a name, we had to use and assign it inside the generate loop. But now we can do it outside. So that's pretty nifty. Let's just to prove it, delete this. And we'll do it in here. So assign LED zero clocks it's going to be clocks zero dot clock slow and then we'll assign all three of these actually and we can use these curly braces to create a list so we'll do that, comma. Now, I realize I just created some copy and pasting, so this isn't the best convention here. But to illustrate the point, this is what we're going to do. We can indeed assign and access these clocks and assign them to things outside the generate loop. Okay. 
let's build it. Looks like we got an error. What'll it be this time? Part selection direction is opposite from prefix index direction. C decoration of LED. Line 44. Oh, guys. Why didn't you tell me? We can't be declaring this backwards. Three, two, one, zero. I do a lot of regular programming, so putting these indices in here in the opposite order sometimes catches me off guard. You gotta watch out for that. Let's try again. Alrighty. Upload. So we should be seeing our four lights still. There we go. And we set our, actually we only set the LED index four to clock zero clocks, index zero clocks low. And that's because if you actually typed this guy out, you would see something like this. Seven, six, five, and then the four would be the clock slow, which would be alternating between zero and one. So, that's why the other three are off, and if we wanted to hook them all up to that, then we would have to do that explicitly. Since we're in the mode of making everything as simple as possible, let's clean up a little bit. We no longer need these wires because we moved them in here and inside each new generate block the scope is reset so we can create four wires called clock slow but they can't see each other because each is in a separate generate block that's running. And then this is a bad idea. Let's not do that. Let's go back and set all these to zero. And uh, put our assign back in here. LED. I equals clock slow. And so that's about as simple and reusable as you can make this. Again, these generate loops can save you a ton of time, especially when you're putting together hundreds or thousands of a certain module. You don't want to be copying and pasting that, trust me. So these are really nice for organizing your code and reusing code for circuits that you have already laid out as modules. If you recall in the last video, I mentioned that the generate for loop is a little bit different from a regular for loop. So in the next video, I'm going to show you what the difference is and how you can utilize regular for loops for simplifying your code. So stick around. See ya.